Hello everyone, Dibs here with a live StarCraft 2 gameplay video for you of StarCraft 2 Legacy of the Void. Now today, we're going to be playing a Zerg versus Terran on Prion Terraces. Now on Prion Terraces, you can see that there is this gold base in which we are allowed to get a very fast mineral economy, which is very beneficial to both Zerg and Terran within the last patch. So the meta of Zerg and Terran is usually that the Terran would go tanks or marine and marines and usually MMM with mines. It's either one of those, so I feel like Meadowling Bane does very well against them as pretty much tanks will destroy any Roach Ravager composition. You can tell that Reapers are also going to be very, uh, very common on this map because of this ramp right here. This uh, cliff right here allows Reapers to go back and forth and allows you to be harassed very, very easily. So it's very common for a Terran to open up Reapers and that is why on this map I tend to open up Gas first. So when we go Gas first, I'm going to be opening up Extractor at 18 and also be grabbing my Spawning Pool at 19. So usually most of the time whenever I grab that gas first is because I want to get that lean speed as fast as possible. This will allow me to defend any kind of early reaper harass and any early reaper all in as well. Because you want to make sure that you know the meta and what kind of maps are very good for those types of meta. You kind of want to figure out what you're going to be going up against and what is very common um, in the meta at the moment. So right now just getting the spawning pool down, waiting for that hatchery to finish. And once that hatchery is finished, I'm going to be starting to transfer my drones because that is where you want to get the extra percentage of mineral income from as soon as possible. So yeah, Meadowling Bane has pretty much been my go-to strategy nowadays because Roach Ravager has become pretty weak when a lot of Terrans have been opening up ro uh, tanks and Marines as well. All right, so I'm going to be transferring my drones over, trying to get that early saturation. But I think I transferred it just a little bit too early, but that's not really a big deal. Just gonna try to see if I can get these mining here as fast as possible. And once my spawning pool is done, all right, it's gonna be done. I'm gonna my queens out, double queens to protect, protect against any kind of early reaper harass and making two pairs of links to defend against that first reaper if it comes around. As you can see, I'm also spreading out my overlords to make sure that if I have any drops incoming into my base earlier or later on in the game, I have good vision over it. And also I'm gonna get, oh, there's a Reaper. And also I can get my first Overlords to scout their base once they're in position. So I'm just gonna tag this Reaper with my Zerglings, try to deal as much damage to it as possible and drive it away. Should not have lost that first drone though, but not sitting there and my Queen is gonna be out and thus I can protect it, but to protect my base from it. But now I have two Reapers in my base. I'm gonna be making a little bit more Queen and making a little bit more of Lingsa so I can not take any more damage from this. I'm taking quite a bit of damage, but not that much drone damage, so I'm doing just fine. So the thing that I'm really worried about is the amount of Reapers that's going to be coming in later on because of how aggressive he was with his first two Reapers. I feel like I can sense that another, yep, more Reapers are going to be coming. I need to pull my drones to see what is going to be going on. Uh, okay, now I'm pretty safe at the moment to bring my drones back because I have these queens and these things and my speed is about to finish up. So if I had no speed in the beginning or no gas first in the beginning, this would have not been able to get my speed at the right time. But I want to be uh, be sure to protect it and get a spine down as well because I want to make sure to uh, take care of both sides of my natural and also my main. He's going to be making a little bit more links because I feel like he's going to be starting to become aggressive. And once he becomes aggressive, I can get the early surround on him because he does not expect me to have these link speed in time. So now I have these links. I should be able to deal enough damage to protect myself against these Reapers. So now that he's going to be losing all of these Reapers, they have pretty much no chance to escape. And now that they're done or gone, I can pretty much drone my um, bases as freely as possible. I'm going to be going layer and also bailing nests at the same time. This is important because this allows me to prepare for any kind of Hellion or Hellbat pushes that might be coming. But I'm pretty sure they're not going to be coming because of the amount of Reaper that he put, amount of a uh, money he put into his reaper, amount of gas actually. So I'm just grabbing my gases, I'm going to be preparing to go for a layer tech which is going to be a mutas and I'm going to transition into lean bank muta out of this game. I'm going to be poking up here just to see what's in front of his base. All right, so that's a really good sign that his natural is not fully saturated yet because you can tell he only had a very little amount of units in front of his base and his, um, let's say his front, his wall was not completely done. If that's the case, that means it's pretty much hasn't been down for a long time. So once my third goes up, I want to transfer, I want to saturate that as fast as possible. I'm going to be going for upgrades on my evolution chambers as well. 
I want to actually have my overlord spread very well and also leans in front of his base just to make sure that he does not push out and I can tell exactly when he is going to be expanding as well. I'll be making drones to saturate my third, getting baneling speed as fast as possible. And this is a pretty good defense that we did in the beginning and now it has put us pretty far ahead on the economy. I'm going to be droning and droning and droning, trying to get this amount of creep spread as far out as possible. And also I'm going to morph my overseer just so I can see what is going on into his base. Now he scanned my base right there. As you can see that um, I put my spire up there for a reason because I knew that he was going to scan my, uh, my base in, when I had circle radius. And I put my spire up there so he will not be able to see what is going on. So now he pretty much knows that I'm at lair. He knows I'm going double upgrades but does not know that I might be going um, Meters. He probably can guess that I am, but does not know for sure. So it could be anything. Just trying to get my index going on. Trying to spread my creep as much as possible again. And get my index going. Pretty much get my lean scout here. And if I don't see a third going down, because I have my lean on his third. And it doesn't look like he's spending. He's going to be going medivax as well. Okay, so it looks like it's going to be a two base push against me. So I want to grab a few more gases, drone it up a little bit more. So I can get my meter count high and then start making um, army units to defend against that two base attack. I want to continue to spread my creep again as always. Continue doing so. And it looks like he's just trying to get rid of my scouting lanes on the map. So I kind of don't want to get supply cap here. Just droning and droning and droning. So yeah, that's why I feel like him going Marine Marauder Medivacs is perfect for this build because, well, Marine Medivacs are pretty weak against Meteling Bane, especially when they're a little bit behind on economy already. And if you had tanks, it would not be as hard either, but the thing is, the siege tanks would be able to get big hits on my Banelings, which could be dangerous for me. But it looks like he's going to be starting to move in at this point. I want to make sure that I get a good surround on him. kind of want to pull him back on creep as far as possible. I should not have morphed those Banes out there so much. I lost a few, but I'm just waiting for him to come so I can get the perfect surround. I'm going to be going in right now, trying to get this around. Got a few Marines. I did not kill his entire army, so I want to pull back a little bit, make sure that I have enough. But he's going to be pushing pretty far in, so I feel like this is a good time to go in. I'm running my Danes forward, using my Mutas to attack and my Lings as well. And once these Marines are down, I can pretty much take care of the Metamax no problem with my Mutas by shift clicking them. I'm going to be getting back onto my fourth base, spreading creep as well as I need to, and then trying to make sure to reduce his Metamax count. I don't want to risk all of my Mutas just for that one Metamax. Okay, make sure that I have all my injects going, drop a macro hatch. That macro hatch should have gone down a while ago because going Ling heavy, you should have, <coughs> at least I should have dropped my uh, macro hatch a lot earlier. Pretty much the same time that my third went down. Because, well, Ling heavy, you want to have as much larva as you can. It looks like he's trying to push this area and get rid of my creep. But I can pretty much get my creep back up again once I'm going, once I'm able to get my uh, queens out there. But once I put my queens out there, I gotta make sure that they're safe. So I'm gonna try to attack him at the same time while spreading my creep. That's one of the important things that you want to do when you're respreading, or that one of the important things is that you want to respread your creep. A lot of times, when you get your creep done or a creep killed, a lot of times you feel like you just want to let it go and not respread it again. But it's very important for you to respread that creep as often as you can. I have my meters taking care of these medevacs and just trying to push through again as far as possible. It looks like he has a lot of trailing units here, and I'm pushing him back, and he still has no third base which is very good for me because I'm already on three full base economy and putting down my fourth. So pretty much at this point of the game, it's just going to be a big snowball. I'm, pretty, I'm really hard, far ahead on economy and I just have to keep making army and just throwing stuff at him until he runs out of minerals. I want to be using my meters up here to take care of a lot of the attachments that he has because it will slow down his production and distract him at the same time while I push up with these lings and bane lings, which is open which has a front open and I'm going to be running my banings in here and I'm going to be trying to get those the CVs which I got a huge hit on and now his economy is pretty much just shot I'm going to be running everything back up here to try to see if I can finish him off but he does have a lot of things here and he's going to be lifting again and trying to be trying to survive as long as possible but I think it's pretty much GG at this point and he's just hanging on for as long as he can but I am still able to push him and um, do a lot of damage with my Meatless, even though I lost on my ground army. But those are really easy to replace, and I have a trailing army coming back. So, yeah, at this point, it's pretty much... I just want to kill him as fast as possible and keep flooding him with units. At the same time, though, I'm going to be going Hive Tech, 
and trying to go for ultras if this game were to continue for a lot longer than I would have expected. Because if you go ultras, that will pretty much decimate his uh, marine marauder medevac army and he probably would not have any counter to that unless of course he would be going liberators. But at this case, or in this part of the game, if he had a couple of liberators at the counter of my meters, I would definitely be going, oh, I don't want to lose these, uh, I don't want to lose these queens, I want to <laughs> save them and put my entire army just to save those queens. But yeah, anyway, if he was going liberators, I would definitely have gone a little bit of corruptors just so I can try and get those liberators out of the sky. And at the same time, I would be going infestation pit so I can get my ultras out as fast as possible. And because the thing is, the reason why he goes Liberators is that it counters not only Mutas, but also your Ultras when they come later in the game. And the only way to counter that is either to go Vipers, while you get a few Corruptors at the same time. So right now my Mutas are doing work, killing a lot of his units, and I'm just flooding everything. And these Overseers should have been here a while ago. If these Overseers were here, then I would have been able to finish them out. But yeah, that's GG. So anyway, yeah, that was a good game. Uh, Meedling versus Bane, uh, Meedling Bane versus Terran, and that is pretty much how I normally play Zerk vs Terran nowadays. I'll be doing a lot of more ZVT, ZVP, and ZVT game analysis and live gameplay in the future. If you like this video, please hit the subscribe and like button, and I'll catch you guys in the next game. Thanks for watching.